Excuse me, ma'am. What do you do for a living? Interesting facts about famous people. Mismatched actors in westerns. Some actors just fit into the western genre, like the proverbial hand that fits into a glove. Gary Cooper, Randolph Scott, Clint Eastwood, and of course John Wayne. But how about actors who, against all logic, appeared in westerns that just don't make sense and stick out like a sore thumb? Let's talk about some of these today, based on online discussions on the theme. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. Head over to my channel if you want to check out my many, many other videos. The link is in the description. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel as well. I really do appreciate it. Let's get into it. In no particular order, starting with Broderick Crawford. During World War II, he was a regular radio announcer for the Armed Forces Network, introducing broadcasts for live musical performances for such artists as Glenn Miller's Air Force Band. Some Westerns. Texas Ranger, Right Again, 1940, as Mace Townsley. Badlands of Dakota, 1941, as Bob Holliday. Men of Texas, 1942, as Henry Clay Jackson. Bad Men of Tombstone, 1949, as William Morgan. Lone Star, 1952, as Thomas Creighton. I can accept Clark Gable as a smooth, sensible Westerner, but Gruff Broad Crawford as his sidekick? Not so much. Sean Connery, a Scottish actor, the first actor to portray fictional British secret agent James Bond on film, starring in seven Bond films between 1962 and 1983. Only Weston, in Shellaco, 1968, as Shellaco, a hard-riding, straight-shooting Western scout. Even with Bridget Bardot home, and Honor Blackman the in the cast, it just doesn't work. Me, Even Woody Strode can't Bobby help this one. Will come in. Many more of your people will die. And how many this time? Jack Lemmon. He starred in over 60 films and was nominated for an Academy Award eight times winning twice, and received many other accolades, including six Golden Globe Awards. Only Weston, in Cowboy 1958, as Frank Harris. Jack made his name in comedy, but was forced to appear opposite Glenn Ford and Brian Don Levy. Jack didn't want to do it, and it shows. He hates horses, hates Westerns in general, and looks very uncomfortable throughout the movie. Pack of animals. Well, I'm sorry that we don't measure up to your way of thinking. James Cagney as Jim Kincaid and Humphrey Bogart as Whit McCord in The Oklahoma Kid, 1939. Bogey is even more miscast as the Mexican bandito in Virginia City, 1940, as John Murrell. Cagney became a little more believable as a man of the West once he was older, appearing in both Tribute to a Bad Man, 1956, as Jeremy Roddock and Run for Cover, 1955, as Matt Dow. I sure didn't expect to see Oliver Hardy as Willie Payne, playing John Wayne's sidekick in The Fighting Kentuckian, 1949. Clearly a comic role, so perhaps. Gig Young appeared in a few westerns early in his career. He never seemed at home on the range. Some of his westerns, They Died With Their Boots On, 1941, as Lieutenant Roberts, Lust for Gold, 1949, as Pete Thomas, Only the Valiant, 1951, as Lieutenant William Holloway, Slaughter Trail, 1951, as Ike Vaughan, a.k.a. Murray. Raymond Burr. Didn't strike me as quite the right type for a Western bad guy. Good actor though he is. Memories of his Perry Mason are probably clouding my judgment here. Some of his Westerns, Code of the West, 1949, as Boyd Carter, Station West, 1948, as Mark Bristow, New Mexico, 1951, as Private Anderson, Thunder Pass, 
1954 as Tulsa, Passion, 1954 as Captain Rodriguez. Cornell Wilde always came across to me as too modern and urban as the type to be convincing as a Westerner. One of his Westerns, Two Flags West, 1950, as Captain Mark Bradford. Robert Wagner's California Pretty Boy looks and manners have always struck me as altogether wrong for sagebrush sagas. Some of his Westerns, The Silver Whip, 1953, as Jess Harker, Broken Lance, 1954, as Joe Devereaux, White Feather, 1955, as Josh Tanner, The True Story of Jesse James, 1957, as Jesse James. Spoken, they start shaking. By what? Your hidden fires? Jeffrey Hunter, also a young up-and-comer during the same period Wagner was with the studio, also struck me as too contemporary in looks, like a frat boy, and too contemporary as a type to credibly play Western heroes on the screen, though he did. His acting was good, but that modern mid-20th century look he had was just too much. Some of his Westerns, Three Young Texans, 1954, as Johnny Colt, White Feather, 1955, as Little Dog, the Searchers, 1956, as Martin Pauley. The Proud Ones, 1956, as Thad Anderson. Gun for a Coward, 1957, as Bless Keogh. The True Story of Jesse James, 1957, as Frank James. Sergeant Rutledge, 1960, as Lieutenant Tom Cantrell. He's got something to say that might be interesting. Ray Milland, excellent horseman though he was simply wasn't cut out to star in Otis, yet he appeared in a few, and some of them were quite good. Milan worked hard to conceal his basic Britishness, and succeeded to a degree, and who's to say there were no English-born Westerners, homesteaders and the like, who came from backgrounds similar to Milan's back in the 19th century. Some of his Westerns, California, 1947, as Jonathan Trumbo, Copper Canyon, 1950, as Johnny Carter. A Man Alone, 1955, as Wes Steele. Dropping my gun. You can't shoot an unarmed man. No, but I can sure beat you to death. Will Smith in Wild Wild West, 1999, as Captain James West. When Will Smith asked his mother what she thought of the movie, she replied, You've done better, baby. Will Smith turned down the lead role in The Matrix, 1999, to star in this movie. Being a fan of the television series, he later said this was the worst decision he made in his career. Ewan McGregor, Jane's Got a Gun, 2016, as John Bishop. A multi-talented actor, McGregor's only Western, certainly is an uncomfortable fit in this Western. Although set in the American West, none of the three principals are American-born. Portman is Israeli, Egerton Australian, and McGregor Scottish. Elvis in Charo didn't do it for me. Some of his westerns, some you can argue, aren't westerns at all. Love Me Tender, 1956. Flaming Star, 1960. Stay Away Joe, 1968. Charo, 1969. Frankie Avalon in the Alamo, 1960, as Smitty, clearly in addition to attract the young audience, as with Rio Bravo, Ricky Nelson as Colorado Ryan, North to Alaska, Fabian as Billy Pratt, Roy Orbison in The Fastest Guitar Alive, 1967, as Johnny. He was supposed to be funny, but fell flat.
Steve Reeves in A Long Ride From Hell, 1968, as Mike Sturgis. Usually the strong man in movies like Hercules, but not as a cowpoke. Glenn Campbell in True Grit, 1969, as LaBeouf. Glenn Campbell later said, I've never acted in a movie before, and every time I see True Grit, I think my record's still clean. Arnold Schwarzenegger's only Western in The Villain, 1979, as Handsome Stranger. The film received many negative reviews, criticising the execution of the slapstick and the satire. He saved my life once, and I've been beholden to him ever since. When is Miss Johnson? I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check out my Facebook page. The links are in the description. I am Wrangler. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.